English humour, a crisp canter through the criteria of English language humour. Part 24, Panel Games. The panel game, in essence, is a means of highlighting performers' improvisational abilities. They're often framed as conversational, and they're certainly very, very popular in Great Britain at the moment, and I imagine many other places as well. But here in Spain, for example, the comic panel game is unheard of. However, even by the time of Izzy Hack, which started in 1972, we were awash with panel games. Hence, I'm sorry I haven't a clue's subtitle, The Antidote to Panel Games. So where did they come from? The genre is usually traced to 1938, to the show in the United States called Information Please. The format was that people would ask questions, you'd send them in via postcard, and you get $2 if they were read on the radio, and I think $50 if none of the panel could answer. This later transferred to TV, but the earliest known TV panel show is Play the Game, which was in fact charades on the telly. So already we're moulding the idea that simple games, when played by entertaining people, are good television and radio material. From 1966 to 1981, the Americans were blessed with Hollywood Squares, which we know in England as Celebrity Squares. The show had two more series before closing in 2013. And again, it was used as a showcase for people who were in the news at the time, especially from the background of showbiz. They would go on and offer their answers, their funny answers, which were often supplied rather disappointingly before the show by the production staff. They called them zingers. Nice, short, pithy jokes. So unfortunately, you don't know whether it's the guest or the show's writers who provide the comic answers, such as The flag of Alabama is white with two what? To which the answer came, two eye holes. Still, at least that was intentional. On one non-comedic British game show, a man was asked, What is the most dangerous race in the world? To which he answered, The Arabs. Just a minute is still going. It started in 1967. It's an incredibly simple format which was dreamed up by Ian Messiter, a BBC producer who also brought the game 20 Questions to radio, as he was riding on top of a number 13 bus, recalling his history teacher. He used to catch Messiter daydreaming in class and say to him, Repeat everything I've just said, without hesitating or without repeating. That's all you have to do in the game as well. You have to talk for one minute without hesitating or repeating. There's one other rule, you can't deviate from the subject. This is not even, in essence, a comic idea. But of course the quality of the guests and the type of guests will determine how the thing comes out. It's generally funny. We like to see people fail as well. It's quite difficult to speak for a minute, keeping to these rules, as we found out in the Spanish version in the Club Desastre. But it always goes down well. It clearly goes down well in India as well, as there, there was a special broadcast in 2012 when Indian guests were invited to play and were incredibly good. A Question of Sport was an early quiz-type panel show on the television. This morphed over the years into being a comedy show. The interesting thing was that the sports people involved could often be just as funny as the professional comedians. With that as a benchmark, it was easy to think we could do the same with pop music, and thus was born Never Mind the Buzzcocks. The typical satirical roundup of the news was turned on Radio 4 into a quiz, the news quiz and a panel game, again, so that the guests simply have to answer questions about the news. This gives them a chance to be witty and satirical, as does the TV version, Have I Got News For You, with stalwarts Ian Hislop, who you know from Private Eye, and Paul Merton from the Comedy Store Players, and a similar battle of stand-ups based on current affairs, which was known as Mock the Week. 
I'm quite a fan of the panel game format. Some people think it's a bit tired now. Maybe it is. But I have to confess to laughing much more at, I'm sorry I haven't a clue, than a lot of stand-ups and comedy films that I've sat through. Would I Lie to You is a kind of branching out of the panel show theme. In this version, the host, Rob Bryden, asks one of the competitors, and they will be in two teams, one led by David Mitchell and the other led by Lee Mack, and frankly it's the interplay between these two that makes the show as good as it is. So one of the competitors is chosen at random, they have a card in front of them which they read out, and on the card is written a statement about them. And the game consists in the members of the other team simply guessing whether the story is true or false. Sounds incredibly simple, and it is. They could just say true or false, of course, but the show consists in the cross-examination of the person to see if they can get them to give away the lie. Team captain David Mitchell also hosts a show, a panel show, on Radio 4 called The Unbelievable Truth, also based on truths and lies and many other panel game formats are being tried out. So as far as I'm concerned, it's still not dead. Mm -hmm.